What's up, guys? Thank you for joining. Quick question: How often do you get frustrated with DAX? If so, you're not alone. DAX is a little bit complicated. It's a little bit tricky. And today, guys, today I'm gonna show you one of the key concepts to master this powerful language in Power BI. We're gonna talk about row context. So, are you ready? Let's do this. So real quick, before we go over the examples, I have here some theory and it's really important to be familiar with this theory before we go over these examples, okay? The first point here, evaluation contexts are the foundations of the entire DAX language. Remember, we have two different types of uh, evaluation context. We have the row context and we also have the filter context. And for today's tutorial, I'm going to be covering the row context. So the other point here, the row context provides a value only for the columns of the table being iterated over. Another key concept here is that the row context indicates to DAX which row to use out of a table. So another key concept here is that when you create a calculated column, by default, DAX creates a row context. Also, you can create a row context by using iterators like SAMX. This is the example that we have right here. Another critical concept here is if there is an iterator in a measure, there is no automatic row context. Last but not least, the row context iterates through a table row by row. Remember, row context does not filter the table. Critical concept. Some of you might think Nestor is speaking in a totally different language. I don't understand anything. And like I said, DAX is a little bit tricky. So now let's go over the examples to understand these concepts better. Okay, so here we have a table. So the first thing that we wanna do here is create a calculated column. So let's do that. Right click, new column. We're gonna name this column cells without discounts. And we're gonna add also column here to differentiate it, okay? And here we're gonna find total sales without discounts. So we select here unit sold times sales price. It's right there. And let's hit enter and see what happens. So you can clearly see here that we created this calculated column. So now let's go over data and see what's going on. See right here, this is a new column and then we have a different value for every single row. So that means that the row context is working perfectly. So we can also customize this a little bit better. Boom. So the row context, like it says right here, it's scanning every single row from the financials table and then it's giving you the results for a specific cell. And we have different results for each cell. So it means that the row context is working perfectly fine. Okay, so let's go back to report. And then we can also drag this into here. There you have it. So now, and this is a different concept. So what's happening here is that this calculated column. So when we drag this into this table, we are creating another evaluation context, which is the filter context created by the report. But that's a different topic, okay? So let's let's keep working on the raw context for now. Another cool thing that we can do is, how about if we use an iterator? So let's do that. So we're gonna create a new column. So let's go over here, new column, because we are testing the concepts here, okay? And then we're gonna name this sales without discount, column two. And we're gonna use an iterator here, okay? Some X, and then the table is gonna be the financials table. And here, we're gonna do the calculation, right? Unit sold times sales price. 
There you go. So once we are done, let's hit enter and see what happens. Now, remember, this is a calculated column. If we are working on calculated columns, there is no filtered context here. There should be just row context, okay? So let's go back to data and see what's going on here. So what is going on here? So we are seeing just one value for every single row. Same value for every single row, for every single cell. So what is going on? Why are we getting different results compared to the previous calculated column? So here is the explanation. And I'm going to do my best to explain this with simple words, okay? So bear with me. The row context is iterating over financials. Check the formula there. The row context is iterating over financials and its position on the current row. Remember that when we create a calculated column, there is a row context by default. Keep that in mind. Also, we have an iterator here, which is the SAMX function, right? So the SAMX function introduces a new row context that iterates again over financials. But financials is not being filtered because the row context does not filter. Remember, the row context does not filter. And as a result, SAMX scans the entire financials table. And finally, we get the grand total amount for each row. So that's what's happening here. That's the reason that you're seeing here the total amount for the whole sales table for each row, for each cell. Keep that concept in mind, okay? Like I said before, DAX is a little bit tricky. What is key here is to be familiar with the concepts. So let's go back to report and let's see what's going on here. So let's drag this column into this table. Here we should be expecting the wrong results because of the explanation that I just provided. So now, how about if we use the same expression to create a measure? So let's see how the results change. So we're gonna copy this code, check this out, and then right click, and we're gonna create a measure here. Control V, and then let's call this measure instead. So we just approved the changes and let's see what's going on here. So let's go back to raw context real quick. Remember this concept. If there is an iterator in a measure, there is no automatic row context. So what's happening here? We go back to examples, go back to the measure that we just created. There should be a row context here, but there is no an automatic row context based on the definition that we just saw. So what's happening here is that we are aggregating the information because we use measures to aggregate information, to aggregate data. And then you will see that we are getting the right results because we are using measures here, okay? So let's double check that. So let's drag this into the table and check this out. So what you're seeing here is that you are getting the same results for every single product. And of course, the column in the middle is wrong because we we just explained the reason. And then this column and this column right here, we are getting the same results. If you are getting the same results with a calculated column and also a measure, you would definitely wanna go with a measure because measures does not consume memory, okay? Please keep that in mind. There you have it, my friend. I hope you found this content really helpful. If so, as always, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, Leave your questions and comments below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. Also, check this content out if you want to keep sharpening your DAX skills. All right. See you guys next time.